Long live viewers, wonder what are we going to talk about this day? Well, we are going to tackle the sleeping giant of Asia, none other than China. Specifically, we will have a thorough discussion of the country's language program and policies before heading to comparing and contrasting it to our own country's language programs and policies as well here in the Philippines. So, better stay tuned because this video presentation is filled with knowledge and oozing factual information only made for you. So, better keep in touch because here we go from group 2. Ni hao, was min tin chao, Gia Manuel. So now I'll be giving you a background about China. China, all people's Republic of China is a country of East Asia. It is the largest of all Asian countries as well as the most populous country in the world with more than 1.4 billion population. With a with distinctively diverse community in China, it is a unified multi-ethnic country which consists of 23 provinces, 4 municipalities, 5 autonomous regions, and 2 special administrative regions, namely Hong Kong and Macau. China is home to 56 ethnic groups, all who play the critical role in the development of the various languages spoken in the country. Linguists believe that there are 279 living languages in China today that are geographically defined. However, Chinese Mandarin is the most popular language with over 955 million speakers out of the 1.21 billion people in China and is the most widely spoken native language in the world. In fact, Mandarin itself is one of the major Chinese dialects. Mandarin is known as Potonghua, which means a common speech and is defined as a modernized form of Mandarin, which borrows from several sub-dialects of Mandarin and has been painstakingly developed by the People's Republic of China since the 1950s. Linguists have split Chinese in somewhere between 7 and 10 main language groups, uh, Mandarin being the largest also known as Northern, Wu, Min, and Yu, and each group also has a number of sub-dialects. So guys, I'll be flashing you uh, the language management and program in People's Republic of China by Bernard Spolsky. You can just pause this video so you can further read it. So here it goes. In 2007, Joseph Lo Blanco argued that too few studies existed on language policy within China written in Western languages such as English, so there are just a few studies about it. Uh, aside from this, the PRC tends to focus on giving the school the privilege to develop more programs. So for further discussion, let's listen to the next supporter. I skip the matter please to present the educational language programs in China. The theoretical foundation for the current educational system in China may be traced to the decision on the reform of educational structure, a decree issued in 1985 by the Central Committee of the Chinese Communist Party, which was formalized a year later by the National People's Congress with the ratification of the compulsory education law. The language of instruction. The most common language of instruction in elementary and secondary schools is Mandarin, the main official language of China. In some regions where majority of the students are ethnic minorities, instruction is offered in both Mandarin and the dominant local language. In higher education, however, the language of instruction is predominantly Mandarin, although English taught programs and courses are becoming increasingly common in attempt to internationalize China's higher education system. The compulsory education in elementary and lower secondary school. The current curriculum follows the ministry's guidelines for compulsory education curriculum reforms implemented nationwide in 2005. The foreign language 
taught at junior high schools is most commonly English, though schools may also offer Japanese or Russian and other students at some schools have option of learning second foreign language. Under the common reforms in senior secondary school, provinces will adopt one of the two models referred to as 3 plus 3 and 3 plus 1 plus 2. The mandatory general subjects remain at the same in both cases. This includes learning in the field of language and literature, which is mandatory Chinese language and a foreign one. China's obsession with learning English. At most significance is attached to learning English since English proficiency improves students' chances for university admissions worldwide and enhances their prospects for career advancements, particularly against the dark backdrop of China's rise as a global economic power. This in turn had led many Chinese children to start learning English as early as preschool and in higher education gives change to different programs offered in different universities across China. Let's start talking about the language policies in China. Let me introduce myself first. Ni hao, wo shi mei shi yue, hayu din tian, wo mei yu tian zai zong zi. So the language policies in China. Language structure of the corpus policies of China's language. Linguistic features and applications of the Chinese language family. The Chinese languages and their dialects are characterized linguistically as isolating or analytic. In that word, units do not change due to inflection. Number one, the phonological structure of Chinese syllables is subject to strict limitations. In Mandarin, for example, it may have anywhere from a single vowel to up to five phonemes or the smallest unit of sound, and n in either a vowel n, ng, or r. With all these restrictions, the number or of possible syllables in Chinese has a clear maximum limit. So, there are a total of only 1,277 different syllables in Mandarin, including the tonal variants and 261 of these possible pronunciations corresponds to only one word each. The number goes down to around 400 different syllables if tone distinctions are omitted. So, the phonological structure of Chinese syllable in Mandarin consists of an optional initial consonant plus vowel or that is accompanied by tone plus optional final consonant like N or NG. And it is also the sequence of speech sound typically made up of most often vowels. For example, is mu R or daughter in English, which they exerted more tone than pronunciation. Another one is RZ, which means sun. What is the tonal variance? So the tonal variance, it is the sound or pitch of how you pronounce the word. Number three, Chinese language family over the last 2,000 years for single morpheme words to develop into compounds of two or more morphemes. This has reduced ambiguity and enriched the language. Grammatically, the Chinese languages display a basic subject verb object word order as does English. Some linguists have proposed the topic comment syntactic model as a more appropriate one for Chinese, where a topic is introduced and then some comment is made on it. Classifiers or measure words are a notable feature of modern Chinese and most Sino-Tibetan and Southeast Asian languages. Measure words comparable to piece in a piece of cake and sheets in a sheet of paper in English are required for almost all nouns in Mandarin when preceded by a number or demonstrative noun. Traditional Chinese grammarians only divided the words of their language into two categories and these are substantial or meaningful words and functional or empty grammatical particles. This sparse distinction may reflect the fact that even today, 
many words in the Chinese language family cannot be definitively classified as nouns, verbs, adjectives, adverbs, and so forth except as they are used in a specific context. We mean by single morpheme words are words that cannot be broken into another analyzable parts like prefix and suffix, and it is the linguistic part of a word that have meaning like the part un, break, and able, which means unbreakable or libukepo in Chinese. And the traditional Chinese grammarians, which is also known as the classical Chinese, that first and foremost refers to the written language of the classical period of China, and each word is expressed by one syllable that knows to no declension or conjunctions. For example, is Wu Mang, which means I'm busy in traditional Chinese, while Wu Mang in Mandarin, which translate the same meaning. So in here, the implementation of bilingual education in schools are protected by laws to protect China's ethnic minorities and we mean by Chinese scholars is the official occupied position at the top of the traditional hierarchical society for, for the possessed prestige, wealth, and power. So, the language education in China become unprecedented as comprehensive study to the extent that they are having their English class to learn foreign language like English. So, that's all for my report and shishi. The third one is the status or social standing policies. Language policy in the People's Republic of China based on the theory and practice since 1949. Language centralizes about power, identity, opportunities, and above all, passion and nationalism. The Han majority has been struggling and juggling between their home, vernaculars, and the other speech. Moreover, the various minority groups have been struggling between their native language and Chinese, maintaining the former for their heritage and identities and learning the latter for quality education and socio-economic advancement. The contributors for this volume provide the first comprehensive scrutiny of this sweeping linguistic revolution from three unique perspective. The first one is the outside scholars are critically questioned the parties between constitutional rights and actual practices and between policies and outcomes. The second one, inside policy, practitioners review their own project involvement inside politics, pondering over missteps, undergoing soul-searching and theorizing their personal experiences. Lastly, scholars of minority origin give inside views of policy implementation and challenges in their home communities. The volume shed lights on the complexity of language policy making and implementation as well as on the politics and ideology of language in contemporary China. Contemporary language and script reform in China. The chief goals of language planning in China are given as to standardize and promote Mandarin Chinese as the commonly spoken language of the People's Republic of China. Chinese is one of a very few contemporary languages whose history is documented in unbroken tradition or a script that for the practical purposes was independent of any particular phonetic manifestation of their language and they are allowing the Chinese to look upon the Chinese languages. Multilingualism in China the present volume is the particularly noteworthy for the clarity with which it lays bare both the 
linguistic issues in such reform and the massive non-linguistic and supralinguistic factors often including traditional religious influences that are very extensively examined here that ultimately mold it shape and rectify it Law of the People's Republic of China on the standard spoken and written Chinese language. The language policy embodies and the language law is to promote Potonghua and implement standard Chinese character. The language law stipulates that every citizen has the right to learn and use the national general language and the staff members involved in state organs and people's organizations. News media, education, and public services must learn and the use of national general language. The last one is the language law also emphasizes that all ethnic groups have the right to use and develop their own spoken and written languages. Now it's time for us to compare and contrast the language programs and policies in China and here in the Philippines. So basically, in terms of language programs, they are common in a way that they give emphasis on their national language that preserves the essence of their cultural language and dialects. We can cite it through the forms particularly made by Spolsky that reflects the status and programs that must be enacted by schools to reinforce the Po Ha or the Chinese Mandarin, their language of instruction to several subjects. Whilst here in the Philippines, we have it instituted by legal procedures under the law, even prescribed and supported by political and law commanders like the renowned bilingual education program in the present. However, the difference between the language programs of these two different countries also lies in here because the language programs that we have here in the Philippines is much more clearer and broader than what they have in China. Maybe because they prioritize only one or a few language, perhaps, in their educational language programs, but I, myself, isn't sure because, as to our research, we can find a free source for public use language programs in China. So, given the fact that we don't have a precise basis, we're just not too sure about it. Nevertheless, how about in terms of their language policies? Well, the language policies in these two different but related countries are common in a way that they reiterate strategies to further the maintenance of their national language. They both assert standards and parameters that repeals the way how their language is appropriately used either verbally or non-verbal. However, they differ in many ways like their language programs, particularly in the way it is instituted and transmitted to education hosts like schools and universities. They vary in their format but the rules are still there. They also vary in restrictions, like for instance, here we have the bilingual education policy which asserts the allocation of the English language to specified subject fields. While in China, it is detailed yet only emphasizes one language, their national language, the modern Mandarin. However, just like the programs a while back, we ain't too sure about this because we cannot grab any free sources online about their language policies because they are all covered with conditions such as payment methods. So, we're just not too sure about this. So that is all for today. Thank you for tuning with us from the group 2. Until the next time, see you proceeding!